Waiatea Fifth Estate is brought to you by ACU, the Aotearoa Credit Union. Welcome to Waitia Fifth Estate, where we wrap the most important news events with the best political panel on television. Joining us tonight to discuss the looming funding crisis within the arts, in studio, the co-general managers of the Basement Theatre and members of the Creative Coalition, Sam Sneddon and Elise uh, Sturbeck. Sturbeck, there we go. So great. I know, I know, I almost had it. Vice President of the Equity Actors Union, Cameron Rhodes, and on the phone, Labour Party spokesperson for the arts, Jacinda Ardern. Thank you for joining us, panel, and remember, viewers, you can send in questions and thoughts in tonight's show off the watianews.com and the dailyblog.nz platforms, or you can email us on watia5e at watia603am.co.nz, the longest email address in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, tonight's guest Twitter commentator is Karen Foreman-Brown. Follow her tonight using the hashtag Watia Fifth Estate. Let's get on with the show. Last month, Creative New Zealand warned it may have to cut arts funding because of a drop in lotto sales, which begs the question, should our culture be tied to gambling? But can arts realistically expect more public money when people are sleeping in cars? Jacinda, current lotto advertising has a solo father buying a pirate ship for his son and sailing around the world. Should funding for our arts culture be dependent on the lucrative, desperate solo parent dream market? Yeah, I mean, I would absolutely argue that in an ideal world, it would not. Um, but there is a fascinating history. If you go back to where the origin of the arts and creative sector receiving funding from lotteries, it, it hails all the way back to... Uh, something like the 1860s with the old arts union, That's where true. tickets were sold for people to try and win pieces of art yes. that they would otherwise find inaccessible. So there is a long history there, but things have changed. We know more about the harms of gambling. We need to try and find a way of transitioning and finding, most importantly, a sustainable way of supporting the arts and creative community in New Zealand because they are a fundamental part, not only of building a sense of place and community, but also they are a part of our regional economies, and we've got to start acknowledging that as well. Um, Jacinda, shouldn't, shouldn't the funding from gambling be uh, the icing on the cake rather than the entire cake? Oh, totally good point. Most people would think it's a little bit of a sweetener, a top-up. It actually forms a, a core of Creative New Zealand and the Film Commission's funding. Oh. So when you look at some of the last budget years, we're, we're talking from the government, you know, give or take, depending on how much lotteries is giving, um, roughly 15 million, twice that coming from lotteries. So it is core funding, not the icing on the cake. Sam, last week you hosted a, uh, an evening for concerned industry stakeholders. Mm -hmm. What were the concerns that were voiced there? Um, well... As Jacinda rightly pointed out, what we've got is a tremendously lopsided model where the rough end of 70% of arts funding comes from gambling profits. It's, which, would, which would probably yeah. amaze a lot of people, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, other, the, the, the real problem with that is, is that people's funding is about core operating expenses. It's not... Um, people don't apply to CNZ for nice-to-have projects. Yeah. They apply to CNZ for core operating expenses. So what you're actually talking about is people's jobs. Mm. So when... CNZ say there's likely to be a 10% reduction in the amount of money that we've already contracted you'll receive. Yeah. What you are essentially saying is there are people who are going to get laid off. There, right. are, there are projects that aren't going to happen that would have happened otherwise. Um, there's economic activity which isn't going to take place. Every grant that's given by CNZ to an arts organisation is paid directly back into the economy. Yeah. It's not a matter of... Um, it, it certainly doesn't go to Panama or anywhere like that. Like, um, it is paid directly into the New Zealand economy. Yeah. So, it, it, this is not, it's not a matter of it being a handout, it's a matter of it being a hand up. Uh, at least, Basement Theatre, which I believe stages some of the best new theatre in New yeah, Zealand. Thank you. Oh, thank you. you get 36% of your funding from Creative New Zealand, a 10% cut by them is a $35,000 shortfall. How does that impact your theatre in real terms? Yeah, well, I mean, we've been looking at, I mean, already we have to think about 
what we might have to adjust. Yep. Uh, we're looking ahead now a year into our programming. Um, what we run at the basement, which is really unique as a venue, is a risk share model. So yep. instead of charging an upfront venue hire fee to artists using our space, we yep. take 20% of their box office sales, mm -hmm. which means that um, for the emerging art sector that we support, yep. uh, there's a real um, removal of barriers to sure. bringing work. So yeah. um, that is that model that we run the only way we can run that is because we receive support from Creative New Zealand. Right. So if that is reduced, um, and we're already, as an organisation and as many arts organisations, so we sail very close to the wind yeah. in terms of um, whether we can keep operating on a month-to-month basis, sure. really. Although sure. we consider ourselves relatively sustainable. Yep. But... Um, yeah, so if we were to face a cut like that, we would have to look at whether we could continue to run a model like that. Cameron, the Arts and Culture Minister, Maggie Barry, who couldn't appear on tonight's show, but she will be appearing uh, next week, she says that it only needs a couple of big jackpot prizes to attract lotto punters back, and I quote, the balls might just roll our way. Your members are actors... Can they realistically plan their careers and their aspirations around the lotto balls rolling their way? Well, I, I suppose actors could buy lotto tickets, you know, in sense of <laughs> hoping to fund their life. But that but seems a bit, if they weren't, if you a bit optimistic, you doesn't it? <laughs> it does. The thing is that um, acting is a very insecure industry. There's no of guarantees. Course, of course. People go into the acting world knowingly. It's not like we sort of, with our eyes closed, but... The, the reality is, that, you know, the, the, the film industry, the television industry and the theatre are our main employers. Now, actors are incredibly resourceful yep. and often work, usually work for the smell of an oily rag. But yep. there are opportunities to do shows which are from uh, funded theatres, like the basement of the Auckland Theatre Company or the Court Theatre in Christchurch. Yep. And these shows give sustained work for an actor. You build a career, you get experience. When I first started, there were theatre companies. Yes. That's where I learned to act, by getting 18 months solid work yeah working with actors like George Henry, Michael yep. Hurst, yep. and I had a sustainable 18-month life. That does not exist. It's all project-to-project -project basis. It's incredibly freelance. Yep. If the funding gets stripped anymore, that means fewer actors are in work, fewer productions are done, and it, it starts to look like a very unsustainable career, I have to say. Jacinda, how do we justify spending almost half a million dollars on elitist culture like opera and the orchestra when we don't have the money for social services. I mean, those, those people living in cars aren't listening to opera, are they? Well, I think what we really have to be careful with, and this is within the arts community, is when there's an ever-shrinking pie, as there is, um, we tend to then start looking at other sectors of the arts and saying, you know, why do they get that yeah. much? <laughs> yep. When actually that's, that's not what we need as a collective sector. We need to be saying, how can we make sure... Uh, that we see this uh, investment as the arts community as just that, an investment. And for every single organisation, whether you're talking about the opera or the NZSO, the amount of funding that they get from the government is small in comparison to the amount of funding that they draw from the philanthropic sector, from box office, through fundraising, just like every other arts organisation, they work very, very hard to increase their take above and beyond what support they might get. Yeah. And keep in mind, um, Bomber, you know, uh, we have, for instance, our Philharmonic um, running something called Il Sistema. They're going into schools um, That's around right. yep. Auckland yep. and teaching kids use of instruments. And so that outreach is incredibly important, and I think it does really challenge some of the assumptions around who enjoys or should have access to those form of art. But the envy side, I want to be really clear on. on in terms of the idea of um, the importance of tackling inequality, look, I'm the children's spokesperson. I spend a good chunk of my time talking about child poverty issues. Yep. But what I also see is poverty of community, when people don't have access to the things to... to you know, art, creativity, mm -hmm. things that actually have mm -hmm. a power to overcome. Yep. It's never going to overcome your poverty by any stretch. So it's not a replacement on the policy we need around inequality. But it is about enhancing and enriching people's lives yeah. beyond just the, yeah. the, the humdrum of every day of working a 40-hour week yeah. of job, two or three of them maybe, and inserting into that what people get quality of life from. And that is what our arts and creative sector provides. I mean, and sister. I know I'm talking too much, but I <laughs> One more thing I want to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at Narangatahi Toa, 
they do amazing work with our alt ed kids yes. who have sometimes yes. have had absolutely horrific lives mm-hmm. and they are turning those lives around using the arts and creativity so uh, yeah, we've got a multitaskers government. It's not one or the other. I love it. Thank you for that, uh, Jacinda. Do you think that we have a problem uh, culturally? There's, there's a bit of a cringe about our own culture. I mean, if this was rugby, they'd be supported and funded up to the eyeballs. But culture in this country doesn't seem to get the same level of respect. Uh, would a, 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 an incoming Labour government look to fund it properly? Oh, look, I mean, you just need to look at our record. I guess the last time we came in, 1999, we started with the arts recovery package because we did recognise that we had seen the community and sector beaten down and we're seeing it again. Um, I think we recognise, and we need to demonstrate this again, we recognise that, you know, the arts play a fundamental role in creating a sense of who we are. We do have to get over that cringe. Um, And, you know, um, the creative sector really... Is a part of us getting over that, you know, fact that we have that sense of cringe, but also establishing ourselves, our culture, our sense of place, our identity. Sam, why should, uh, I'll pick up the question that Jacinda didn't, well, well, I think art did quite well, but why should elite art get so much subsidy when you and experimental theatre, like your good self, yeah. gets a meagre 25% of what they get? Shouldn't we be seeing more money going into the theatre? Um... Well, of course I'm going to say yes to that, Bomber. Good. You've backed me into a corner. Yes. Um, the, I think Jacinda's because bless, right. Oh, because no, because, because bless right. opera, but I never go to no, bloody no, no, opera. No, no, that's fine. And I don't go to the orchestra, but I love to see stories being told on, 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 on the stage. I mean, stage. this is prescient timing. We've got an opera on at the basement this week. Yep. So, um... I don't think that I don't. I think Jacinda's right. I think we can't get into a situation where we start pointing the finger at other arts or other arts organisations and saying you're getting all the money and I'm getting none. What we need to do is have a real hard look at the mechanism for arts funding in New yep. Zealand. And actually, any kind of sustained analysis of that model is going to show that it's deeply flawed. Mm. And not only that, we need to start looking broadly across the economy and looking at the things that not only bring about financial benefits, which the arts certainly do. Mm, mm, I mean, mm. CNZ's own statistics show that of the sort of $140 million that was invested by the government in the arts, yep. they got back roughly f- nearly $500 bucks right, in right. terms of yep. th- it back into the so economy. So it generates, it generates, it generates, it's, it's, it generates it's economic massive, activity. But also, um, there's a huge social good that's associated, as yes. Jacinda rightly yep. pointed out, with yep. the arts. And I think when you're weighing up what should we support, what should we not support, I think when you put something up when you put up something like the arts, which yep. um, I know is used as a political football and yep. I know is seen as being elitist, um, but when you actually put it up against other things, like when, you've got, when you're getting an economic benefit and you're getting a social benefit, I think it's, to me it seems like self-evident yeah. that this is something, for every dollar you put in, you're going to get four back. I mean, that's just a great investment. No, Elise, do, do, yeah. do you think, Elise, do you think, uh, just, just to pick up on the, on the cultural cringe, is that a generational thing? Do you think that the new wave, the new generation of actors and the audiences who are coming along to watch it, that they're actually a lot more embracing of New Zealand culture? They want to hear our stories? Um, I don't know if that's necessarily true, actually. Yeah. I think there's still a lot of work to be done there to yeah. engage younger generations coming through in mm. the arts. Because actually, you know, at the basement where the perception would be, I think that we're a very um, youth-driven space. And certainly we have a real core audience around um, in, in their 20s yeah. who come to see work there. Yeah. But 40% of our audiences are over the age of 40. And yeah. I think that speaks to the great um, infrastructure that existed back in their youth um, that right. actually helped them come and see and experience yep. the performing arts and experience culture. Um, and just to add to um, your previous point Please and do. question there around uh, the elite kind of art yep. forms, yep. Um, I take a slightly different <laughs> perspective actually. And um, that's because uh, my background is in um, Uh, cultural policy. I've done a lot of research in that area. And um, I think what we see in New Zealand is a real hangover from a kind of colonial cultural policy where without question we believe that we should have those uh, kind of big three um, art forms, the opera, the orchestra um, and ballet. ballet. And those are our three national 
um, companies. Yep. And I think if you look at something like the Auckland Philharmonic Orchestra, for example, compared to um, the National Orchestra, um, Symphony Orchestra, yeah, yeah. Um, that uh, if you were to really get into and evaluate the work that they do, you'd see that they were delivering on a very similar level, yet their funding is quite drastically different. And contestable. And contestable. And that's yes. the key thing here, I think. Yep. Why yep. are yep. some art forms in a right. uh, totally protected yep. um, uh Ring fenced area and mm. others have to fight it out between each other. And I'll just no, uh, say no, one final thing. Sorry, that's clear. It was because the last minister, when who conducted, the, obviously, as you guys would know, the review of yeah. the um, symphony, he said that NZSO's funding would would change over his dead body. So, <laughs> yes, and that's a perfect. Well, that's very well. That's that and, attitude. And, 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 and the reason that we have yep. that is because we just haven't, as a country, gotten into what do we want our cultural and it's policy great, to be. It, it's great that we've got passionate defenders of the arts, but surely that passionate defenders of the arts should be all arts, not just a couple that are yeah. in the yes, elite. Exactly. Yeah. Cameron, exactly. Cameron, Cameron, we have, we have amazingly talented actors in this country who have left to become far more successful overseas. What do we need to be doing to keep that talent here so that the domestic industry is resilient and successful? Yes, that is true. And people are leaving. Um, and there's nothing wrong with um, actors going overseas and being successful. No, 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 and no. A lot of actors, some like Sam Neill, loves yep. coming back. Yep. Uh, you know, um, Hunt yep. for the Wilder People... Uh, for example, you know, incredible, wonderful film. Incredible, yep. Uh, you know, in terms of cult, just, um, cultural cringe point, I went to see it at St Luke's Mall. It was absolutely full, three in the afternoon. Yep. People from all walks of life. And when Tyker came on the screen, people cheered. Yes. Like he's yes. an icon. Cheered yes. him, uh, for, I think not only for his appearance, but the fact he'd made this film. Yes. So that is, I think that we are evolving in that sense. Yeah. But it has to be um, able to make a living. Now, there's always, I, I think, a big shift that's happening is that uh, it's been starting to be seen as a profession and a viable job being an actor and working in the arts as a job. Yep. But really, I think at its core, for many years, it's been seen as a hobby. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I still yeah, think yeah, yeah, yeah. that um, mm -hmm. governments, some governments, the current government, perhaps sees it as a, as a as an added extra, a frill, and actually it is a hobby and something we do at the weekends or in our spare time. Right. But actually, <laughs> it's not a hobby. And... Um, the reality is if actors or any performer, anybody in arts is going to be world class, mm. you, you, that's what you do. Yeah. You, yeah. And you have to be um, able to sustain a career We can... Uh, look, a lot of actors and other performers teach. Uh, yep. Myself, yep. I teach, yep. direct, yep. diverse. Yep. But I think nothing wrong with that. Yep. But, um, and actors aren't uh, asking for, you know, a jacuzzi and a limousine. No. But often I've done projects, for example, films, where I, you know, I'd earn more at a fast food joint because we donate our time. Mm. A lot of right. funding uh, applications you have in kind. Sure. People do things in kind. Yes. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. Uh, that is, and the film industry as well. But really, I think to answer your question, there has to be a way that actors can make a life and yep. performers and arts people can make a life here. Um, otherwise, I'm afraid we will lose people. People will either will not do it or yep. they will leave. Jacinda, why can't we have proper funding of the arts that isn't dependent on gambling? I mean, what, what, what's the total budget we're looking at here? Good question. One for Maggie Barry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that probably, you know, in the short term, and I think what we need to do is we do need to transition ourselves yep. because, you know, look, we are, we are talking tens, tens of millions. And if we start taking this stand, you know, there's a range of other there's a range of other groups that feel uncomfortable about their lotteries or pub charity yes. support. You know, so they're not alone. Yep. So we do need to be realistic and have a bit of a transition. But I think in the short term, what the arts community are right to request from government is, look, we can't ride the peaks and troughs. You know, can you imagine, yeah. for instance, if we flip this around and we said to the Ministry of Arts, Culture and Heritage, look, um, Every year we're going to write you a letter and tell you whether or not um, your budget will be reduced by up to 10%, depending on how we've done off the back of the lotteries in the previous year. Yeah. And by the way, you're already having to fundraise in order to keep your doors open in the first place, yeah. because that's what we're asking these arts organisations who are professionally run to try and work under those 
um, under those conditions. So at the very least, I think government should say, look, let's set the, the funding level um, here. Of course, you've always got your grants and contestable yep. funding as well, but for these organisations, we set it here and above and below Creative New Zealand, we, we are going to top up. So we're talking about a $30 million arts budget from, from, from Labour in, in 2017? <laughs> well, look, as I pointed out in the last time we had a bit of a meeting with some members of the community, look, manifestos now aren't the place to properly capture what your intentions are because we don't have access to the books. And we never said in our 1999 policy that we would have the recovery package. We got in, we saw the state of things and what was required, and we invested. So $40 million. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, what? I'll, I'll let you off the hook, just in that. Sam, what I, Sam. What I can say is that we're yeah. behind the idea of setting in that sustainability and topping up those peaks and troughs. We've already said that needs to happen. Excellent. Thank you, uh, just in the Sam, um, what, what alternative funding models do you think that we, we, we need to be uh, exploring right now? Because the industry, is, is, as far as I can see, is absolutely maxed out on the sponsorship and the, the yep. philanthropy side of it. Yeah. So where else are you going to get that alternative funding? <sighs> we're, we're, talk, we're talking the state. The state's just got to actually lift the amount. Well, sure. uh, I mean, yes. I think New Zealand is already an incredibly generous country. So the Arts Foundation tells us that New Zealand is the second highest rate of arts philanthropy in the world. Yep. Yep. So we're already... So it matters. People, yeah, it the matters people who are giving, yep. are ma but the people who are giving are maxed out in terms of giving. Yes. So the argument that the government has got, which is that philanthropy can somehow pick up the, um, the, the, the shortfall, is really nonsense. Right, right. Um, the only place that we can actually bring in more cash is we can either raise ticket prices, yep. which makes um, arts in inaccessible, yep. or the state can kick in more money. Right. And we are talking about... We, yes, we are talking about tens of millions of dollars, but I think what Jacinda's talking about in the, in the interim of like having a, um, because I think Jacinda mentioned it at this meeting we had the other day, that in 2010 when lotteries profits were particularly good, they actually lowered the vote money. So, right. so they saved money in the years where the lotteries profits were really good. So but you didn't in the actually have any highs. No, no, no. So when the, <laughs> but in the years so where the trots. lotteries profits are poor, <laughs> right. um, they... Um, they say, well, you know, you've just got to ride the peaks and troughs. So it's not, it's, you know, you, you kind you of... You haven't ridden the peaks no, yet. It's giving, right. you're giving with one hand and taking away with the other. I also think that there's a real role for um, regional bodies right, to right. pay yeah, a yeah, yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah. Local government. About that. But I Local think... Um, the because because councils, councils make a hell of a lot out of actually holding events, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And there's a global, um, I think, appreciation on behalf of cities that they use culture to attract um, the kind of people they want to live in their cities. Absolutely, and, yeah. Uh, track yep. tourism yeah. and yeah. all those things. But I think um, our sector in Auckland is pretty understanding of the position that our council is in um, around the infrastructure <laughs> yeah. needs, you know, and housing and transport. Yeah. And um, perhaps what we need to see is greater support from central government there as well so yep. that um, these it's regional councils can, can focus yep. on culture. and the Cameron, what, 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 what needs to happen next? Well, um, there has to be discussion which we're having now we the budget's not out yet so we yep, don't know yep, yep. so there's there's um alarm and fear and worry in yes. the sector to do with possible cuts yep. Th these are real fears we don't know if these fears are going to be allayed or not we will know soon yep and uh so we're kind of waiting with bated breath a little bit aren't we right. we'll, we'll, we'll try and get yeah, sam yeah. <laughs> we'll try and, try and get sam on for the uh, budget um, show but what week. i think has to happen um in, in uh, in, a, in a slightly bigger term, is there has to be, a, in my view, there needs to be a, a, a change, a philosophical change, where arts um, are not reliant on gambling to be yep. funded. I think yep. there's something broken with that, there's something yep. wrong with that. Yep. And that needs to, the, the wheels need to change, um, whether we have a change of government or not. Uh, there has to be a responsibility to make that work so we don't, we don't have the vagaries of people buying lottery and, and this is a problem, I'd yeah. like just, yeah. just yeah, on the yeah, back yeah, of what yeah, Cameron yeah. said, yeah. this is a problem that's going to get worse. Mm. So yes. it's not just lotteries profits that are declining. And I don't buy the fact that this is a blip. I think it's a trend. I think increasingly people's gambling habits are changing. Yeah. I think they're moving online, for yep. example. Because all of the pokey, um, all of the other, the gambling are trusts... They're all going water, to the same They're problem. all saying, yep. Yep. the Lion right, Foundation, right, for example, right. is saying we've got 10% less per year. Yeah, yeah. So... You can reasonably assume that in 10 years, That's the Lion right. Foundation yeah, yeah, yeah. will either be gone or yeah. have 10% of what it's got now to give out. Yeah. Which, by yeah. the way, are other great sources of... Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 Well. Yeah. Uh, question yeah. uh, to you all. Should New Zealand look at a New Zealand content quota on our TV stations to reshape the media landscape? Jacinda, would you look at a 
would Labour look at a, a quota? Look, very simple solution. We should just have public broadcasting. Oh. <laughs> Give people some choice. And I mean, cross, you know, that's, that means um, uh, multi platform yep. um, uh, across, you know, um, all forms of screen. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, not giving up on the notion that we should have available content across commercial platforms that are, that is New Zealand content. Yep. Um, uh, as well, um, so and look, we we were the party that introduced the quota. That's um, right. You know, for New Zealand music, yep. there is a place for that. Yep, absolutely. But I think the really simple solution that we it, is so critical now, increasingly critical, is is decent public broadcasting. Sam, content quota. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, I think, yeah, sorry. Yeah, um. I think if you look at what's happened as a result of New Zealand on air yep. over the last, so like when that was instituted, New Zealand content was two percent on the radio. Mm. And now it's twenty yep. percent, yep. and there was yep. three and a half thousand dollars, three and a half thousand hours of um, New Zealand programming on TV. Now it's twelve and a half thousand. Yep. Now some of that, granted, is The Bachelor, and but, that's terrible. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <It's> absolutely <laughs> yeah. terrible. But some of it um, is really great stuff. Yes, um, yes, and I think. I think that's something that they've used in Australia for many years, and yeah, I think that, yeah, that it's yeah. proven, if you look at the state of their television industry, if you look at the yeah. state, uh, you only have to look at the amount of Australian yeah. actors, It's for a example. golden age in Australia yeah. of television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Elise, qu uh, qu uh, quite Yeah, a... I agree with Jacinda on that front, um, not just for um, content sake, but because it's a whole ecosystem. I yeah. mean, our, um, for shows that are on in our space, the biggest um, source of promotion they get is through Radio New Zealand. That's where right. we get all our audiences from. Right. And um, in fact, they're about to, um, uh, they've just commissioned us to fill, uh, record all of our uh, six theatre shows a year oh, and broadcast them. Oh, um, and so that's more income for our yeah, artists. Yep. That's so good, cool. good, good. Uh, yeah. Cameron, uh, quota would, 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 would guarantee actors Yep, I'm for here, it. I think it uh, absolutely public broadcasting, absolutely. Yep. And uh, yes, uh, just look to look at Australia. I know they're having a lot of slashes, but I'll just repeat it: their their drama is at a golden age. Yes. The quality stuff that you yep. see in Australia, yep. you see them in the commercial networks, but it's a yep. flow on from the yep. ABC. Yep. Yep. They yep. make amazing television. We have to we make good television, but we but just we don't make could, enough of it. That's right. We could be, we we make could enough be New Zealand better. television. Uh, we have to wrap the show. Before we go, we'll do a final quick word with our panelists. Why should the public fund the arts, Jacinda? so intuitive to me, um, Bonga, that explaining it sometimes feels problematic. Yeah. But, um, because, you know, they are so much about building a sense of who we are. They give our sense of well-being. Um, they deliver so much public good. But more, increasingly importantly, and this is what we need to emphasize for people, they're part of our regional economic development as well. Mm -hmm. So we need to start building a strategy that highlights the fact that there is an economic contribution from the arts. It is not a nice to have. Sam? Yeah, it's a no-brainer. Elise? Look, arts are vital to life. If we didn't yeah. have them, it's, it is a matter of life or death. Cameron? Yeah, we've always had them from the beginning of um, you know, Aotearoa from the first peoples here. Uh, our society is a, a capitalist society. I think it's vital for the lifeblood and well-being of us as a nation. Thank you, panel. And to my final word, culture is expression of the human experience. It shapes us, creates us, represents us, reflects us, and challenges us. A society that ignores a well-funded culture and sees it as merely a cost isn't a society worth being a member of. Relying on lotto super draws to fund our arts would be funny if it weren't so terribly sad. Thank you, panellists. Thank you, Farno, for watching. We'll join you again tomorrow night, 7pm, for Wātea Fifth Estate. Kia ora and good night. Wātea Fifth Estate is brought to you by ACU, the Aotearoa Credit Union.